hello, I am Andres Antanke, and are you present here? Our work annotating biodiversity spreadsheets through 5W1H based on machine learning. This work was published in the International Conference on Machine Learning and Data Mining. Uh, the authors are Ivelisi, Elio and me. And we are from Unicamp. The scenario of our work is the research in the biology. They have a, a variety, variety of methods for collecting record and historic biological data and diverse applications for this data. And there are several efforts devoted to aggregate, manage and share data coming from these different resources because it's important for the research to combine data from several sources to articulate their data. So it's very important that each researcher could uh, share data with others in order to achieve better results. So there are several initiatives uh, in, in the direction of uh, uh, re connecting data and reusing data and they are based on the adherence to standards. However, standards seem not to reflect uh, seem do not reflect the scientist demands and therefore it is still common that biologists create their own ad hoc formats and this uh, behavior it hampers the sharing and reusing of content. So our objective in this research is to record the data from biodiversity spreadsheets to transform them to some level according to the FAIR principles. And instead of requiring an standard adoption, our work goes to automatically re recognize the implicit patterns behind data, annotating them according to their purpose. So our work is based on the notion of purpose recognition. And what is that? Uh, the spreadsheets are organized according to their purpose. So researchers define an order of the fields inside the spreadsheets according to the purpose they are uh, envisaging for their spreadsheets. The, and, and this also defines which kinds of operations they can do uh, on top of these spreadsheets. Uh, so according to the spreadsheet organization and purpose, they can uh, combine, for example, different spreadsheets, as you can see in this diagram. So for example, you can consider an specimen spreadsheet, which catalogs specimens in biology, and this spreadsheet could be connected, the data of this spreadsheet could be connected to another spreadsheet data which has occurrences of observed occurrence of animals on the nature. So the architecture of our system, our proposed system is the following. This is the overall uh, scenario of the architecture and we will start for the first part of it which is the schema extraction. So the basic idea is that we work with biodiversity spreadsheets and our goal is to extract their schema and data to transform it in an in a interoperable format. Therefore, in this first uh, step, what we do? First, we get the spreadsheets and extract their data in a plain text format. And then we go to 
a part of the process which is recognize the schema and their attributes based on a dictionary. So we will now detail this part of the process. So the first thing is how do we locate the schema in the spreadsheet? As you can see in this graph that we produced, the schema is usually if we consider the common organization of spreadsheets where the, the, the lines, the rows are the instances and the columns define fields, the schema is usually in the top of the, in the first rows of the, of the spreadsheet. And in this graph we show, for example, how our strategy located the schemas and where is it and as you can see is in the beginning of the spreadsheet so what our approach does to 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 locate the schema it matches the words of each row with a dictionary of possible biodiversity terms and tries to find in the the initial rows, the one that best has more words matching with dictionary. And how we built this dictionary? How did we build this dictionary? So uh, the thing is we consider four uh, sources to build it. The first one is that we did an empirical analysis of several of hundreds of spreadsheets and defined our first empirical version of the dictionary by uh, using these uh, terms. Afterwards, we collected thousands of spreadsheets on the web in the biodiversity context and we did a network analysis. And what is that? We tried to connect each, in this graph, as you can see, each node is a spreadsheet. And we connected the spreadsheets according to the number of common terms. And then we clustered them. So we, we are able to define classes, as you can see, uh, in the in this figure there are terms uh, that are common in each cluster so we are able to to organize or clusterize uh, spreadsheets according to their purpose which are we consider a cluster for example and we are able to define which are the common terms for each of these Purposes. The third part of the dictionary was the comparison with some uh, open common standards, for example, w, Darwin Core, Invo, and other standards as we showed there. And what we did, we aligned the common terms and we re enriched our dictionary with them. And uh, with this dictionary, uh, we are able to analyze the spreadsheet <coughs> and classify fields in five common exploratory questions. So what we did, for example, we could uh, analyze um, a term and based on our dictionary, for example, we can tell that this column is when these two columns are considering what and these columns are related to where so the idea the basic idea is uh, try to define the exploratory questions of the spreadsheet that can enrich its uh, classification why because uh, the, the next step will be to recognize the 
purpose of the spreadsheet and the, its organization and the, the meaning of the fields are very important to understand its purpose. So the basic idea is the following. First, we consider that when we want to recognize the purpose, the positions of the position of attributes in the schema are very relevant to define the role in the purpose. And this this thing this the role of the position is highly related with the exploratory questions. So for example, we observe that when the what questions or what related fields are in the leftmost positions, which we consider the more relevant, the spreadsheets are usually describing things like specimens. When uh, when questions, when related questions are in the leftmost positions, they usually are describing events. So for this reason, we combine the idea of the classification in the exploratory questions and the, the, we give a score to the, to the position. So questions, the, the fields are more relevant to the proposed recognition if they are left the most. The left the most fields are more relevant to the, the schema recognition. And then we produced a descriptor based on the uh, six exploratory questions, as you can see on top, what, who, why, where, when, and how, which is the five W and one H. And um, so the, the descriptor, each row in this figure is a descriptor of a spreadsheet. And uh, it defines, um, it counts the number of occurrences of each exploratory question and gives a weight according to the position in the spreadsheet. So, for example, in the example that, uh, that you can see, the first row is the how question. So, in the descriptor, you can see that the how question receives a high score. And based on these descriptors, we trained a handle forest model, a machine learning model, to classify the spreadsheets according to five uh, purposes. So the first one is species monitoring, which is, uh, is monitor of behaviors and things of species. The second is experimental observation. The third one is species catalog. The fourth one is species occurrence. And the final one, genetic data. So uh, when we are when we recognize the purpose of the spreadsheet, we are able to define uh, consistent operations that we can apply on them and we can apply to combine them. We uh, developed uh, this kind of uh, solution. We put the spreadsheets in a data space and designed operations according to their purpose, but it's out of the scope of this paper. So let uh, us show you some experimental results uh, of our uh, approach. So uh, we produced a training data set composed of 2000 spreadsheets, 400 of each purpose as we, we uh, define it before these five purpose okay and we apply an evaluation protocol of tenfold cross validation uh, uh, to to annotate the spreadsheets for training we uh, we, we adopted a system of classification of spreadsheets 
which we developed in our, our previous work. So this system is the recognize uh, patterns, but it's manually engineering. Uh, uh, it means that we must uh, code or we must manually define each uh, pattern to be recognized. Recognized. So and this pr this system is hard to extend since we must manually add each new pattern and there is no mechanism to, for incorporating the user feedback. So our new system, as we, we present before, is based on machine learning. So our approach was to train this system with data annotated by the previous system. So we applied a knowledge transfer approach. And from, this, from the point that the system has trained, it was the starting point and the system can evolve by itself from this starting point. Here are the hot curves showing the results of our experiment. In the left side, left side we have the rock curve related to uh, the, the, this experiment shows the difference of our descriptors using a, a weighting, weighting according to the arrangement and compared with the, the, the approach without, without it. So in the left side, side we see the rock curve of the system trained using our weighty, weighted uh, descriptors, okay? And on the right side is the results with the training without the weighting. So this shows the better results uh, achieved in the, in the approach with weights shows that our proposition of weighting according to the position is relevant to improve the recognition of the purpose of the spreadsheets. Each color in the rock curve is a specific class, uh, a specific type purpose of a spreadsheet, classified by our system. So you can see there the five purpose which are considered in our experiment. So here is a, a, a zoom in the rock curve, so you can see this, this one is with the weights, okay, so you can see the results, and this one is without weights. Um, so what we conclude from this experiment is that the arrangement weighting uh, confirms uh, the observations of our previous work. That not, an attribute of the leftmost position of the scheme is more relevant to define the purpose of the spreadsheet than the right ones. So the, without these position scores, all attributes will appear the same for the machine uh, of the same relevance. So it was an important uh, decision to weight them according to the position. Uh, after that, we worked to produce a biodiversity spreadsheet benchmark. The basic idea is to produce a benchmark of spread annotated spreadsheets which can be used to, to train system, analyze systems, and so on. So how we did this benchmark? We deployed a survey to biologists, ta? okay? To prospect how they interpret and classify biodiversity spreadsheet. The participation in this survey was only for professionals and graduate students in, biologies, in biology. So biologists received uh, a kind of uh, automatic form which present to them biodiversity schemas and ask them to classify 
the spreadsheet only looking the schema. So the, 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 we are we are applying to them the same approach we use with machines. Try to define what is the purpose based on the schema. So uh, for to, to, to produce this uh, survey, we selected uh, 60 spreadsheets of each purpose. Uh, um, so the, the, these are the five purposes. It's the same we apply in the previous steps of this research. And our system handily selects spreadsheets that will be classified for each biologist. So the biologists will not are not uh, requested. We, we did we did not request to each biologist to classify the sixty spreadsheets of each. Purpose. We select a subset of them randomly for each one of the biologists. So, 271 spreadsheets were classified by 55 biologists. And then we, if we use this benchmark to evaluate of our model. So, what we did, we applied our classifier fly the random forest model in the classification of the same spreadsheets that were classified by biologists in the survey and we compare the results. So the test data set applied in this evaluation was balanced according, according, across subdomains. It was 39 spreadsheets of each purpose in a total of uh, 95 test spreadsheets and um, so in the left size in the left size side we have uh, spreadsheets with uh, sorry uh, um, just correcting it was 39 spreadsheets of each purpose with a total of 195 test spreadsheets. So in these uh, rock curves we can see the results. In the left side we have the algorithm with the descriptors considered in the weight and in the right side without the weight as in the previous experiment. And here you can see the figures, uh, the zoom in the, this, this one is with the weight and the, this one without the weight. So what we conclude we, of this, our work and the experience. So there is still a huge number of biologists who do not adopt a common standards, producing data in ad hoc formats. Our strategy, our recognition strategy assumes that although biologists do not follow a common standards, they follow conventions and patterns and or patterns. So the results of our experiments had satisfactory accuracy in the recognition of the spreadsheet purpose. Our two main contributions are the strategy for recognizing and annotating biodiversity spreadsheets according to their purpose and an improvement and refinement of, a refinement of our biodiversity spreadsheets benchmark, benchmark based on the survey. We acknowledge this, uh, this uh, these organizations for their support to our research. Thank you very much.